Thank you once again this morning. We are graced with some wonderful special music. Reagan played our prelude on organ, and then she'll be playing a piece on the piano uh, just before offering today. Uh, so we thank her for that. And uh, welcome all of you to our second Sunday in Advent. Uh, there are a few announcements I want to highlight. Most of them you can read in your bulletin, but uh, I did want to highlight the rose that is on the altar today. Um, Tipton Wesley Burns, son of um, Dustin and Kelsey Burns, was born this week. So we celebrate with that family and the birth of their son. And I believe Bev has some pictures I saw floating around. <laughs> so, um, so we're happy for that family. Um, also, you'll, you'll notice our, our notice that goes in every week about needing readers for the service. Um, I'm also beginning the process of looking for readers for our Lessons and Carols service. That will be January 4th um, next year, but coming up after Christmas. So if you know that you'll be here on January 4th and you might be willing to read a lesson for that service, if you'd please see me. Um, and then the last announcement I want to um, add, you might have noticed as you came in in the um, parish hall today, there are some stacks of addresses. Uh, those are our shut-ins. If you would like to send cards, I know they'd really appreciate it. Um, especially, you know, Lois, or, uh, uh, Marion and Dorothy have moved quite a ways away. Um, and so if you're able to send some cards to them, those slips of paper, you can just take them with you. Uh, there are multiple copies of their addresses, so um, please remember them at this holiday season and send them a card um, as well. Are there other announcements this morning? Really? <laughs> oh, bad. There we go. <laughs> for the food items for the food pantry, um, Candy Henry came down with a couple of boys and uh, helped us take them through the, the food pantry. And of course, our church was an abundance of stuff. <laughs> so thanks. Um, great. Are there any additions or updates for the prayer list this morning? All right, well then, um, also this morning you may have noticed my parents are here visiting again from the coast of Mississippi where it's 70 degrees. They came here. <laughs> So we're very, I'm happy to have them, but uh, my mother will be doing the sermon today. I'll be doing the rest of the service, but she'll be offering us the, um, the sermon this morning. So I thank her for that. <laughs> um, all right, if there are no other announcements, then we begin this uh, service with our Advent Confession and Forgiveness, which is found on your bulletin insert and also on the screen. Uh, if you would please stand as you are able. We begin our worship as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord of Advent tells us to be watchful for his coming, keeping our lamps lighted and our hearts clean. Therefore, let us confess to the Lord. God and Father of all, we prepare our hearts for the coming of your Son, confessing our sins, confessing our attraction to a world that does not know Christ, and confessing our own inability to recognize you in the lowliest. Forgive our sins, cleanse our hearts, help us to serve your people, and keep us faithful for the promised coming of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God sent his Son, the babe of Bethlehem, to show his infinite love and forgiveness for all. Your sins are forgiven in the holy name of Christ, who came and who will come again. Amen.
We continue with the litany for the lighting of the Advent wreath found on the other side of your Advent confession and forgiveness insert. <clears throat> Advent is a time of waiting. We live for Advent is also a time of preparation. We prepare ourselves for Jesus to come. By reading his story, by praying and singing, by sharing with others. Preparation brings purpose and fulfillment to our waiting. We light the second candle to remind us to prepare. A reading from the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now let us join together in the prayer of the day found in your bulletin insert. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading today comes from Isaiah 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term and her penalty is paid that she has received from the Lord's hand, double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. And the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fade. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the gods will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep.
Today's Psalm is Psalm 85, verses 1, through, 1 and 2, and then 8 through 13. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly your salvation is very dear to those who fear you, and that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. The second reading today is actually uh, different than what's in your bulletin insert, but you can follow along on the screen if you desire. It comes from uh, Luke 1, 57 through 66. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, No, he is to be called John. They said to her, None of your relatives has this name. Then they began motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And all of them were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue freed and began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all their neighbors, and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who, all who heard them pondered them and said, What then will this child become? For indeed the hand of the Lord was with him. Here ends the second reading. I invite the young people to come forward. Good morning. Have any of you ever seen a tool like this? Yes? What is this? Jake, what is that? It's a level. What is, what is its purpose? Do I pound things with it? No. no. It's, for, Do, uh, it's for seeing if things are level. Okay. Right? What does that mean? So, so if, so, okay, can you see in this middle here, you see how there's liquid and a little bubble and two lines? If something is level, if it's flat and straight, that bubble should rest in between those two lines. So like if I put it up here, okay, can you see? The bubble's hanging out right there on the line, right? Because this is flat. Now, if I try to do this, is that level? No. No. (laughs) Right? The bubble's kind of all over the place. Today, in several of our readings, we hear about... God making things level, paths straight, things made prepared properly, level. What do you think that means? Do you think that that God's going to come and make the entire earth flat? No. No? Yeah. (laughs) No? What do you think that means? That things are going to be made level, pathways straight. What do you think, Will? Measured. Measured. Okay, he's going he's gonna to look over the earth, right? And he's going to bring good news, peace, joy, right? What are we waiting for? The birth of God. Right, yeah. Okay, so today we hear about John. So the people in the time of John, they were sort of like this. Okay, they're way down here. They're weighed down by a lot of heavy, terrible things. Big armies trying to attack them. Poverty. Just bad things. They're way down. They're way down here. And God sends somebody named John. We're going to hear more about him. John the Baptist. And he says, John, prepare the people for the coming of Jesus. So you would think John was, okay, let's get prepared and nice and calm and sweet, right? No, John comes and he goes, get ready. (laughs) Get ready for Jesus. He wears camel hair and eats bugs and says wild and crazy things. And people are like, whoa, what is this guy doing? But he prepares them so that when Jesus comes and Jesus brings all that good news, they're ready for it. They're ready to hear it. They're ready to level out their life and say, wow, there are good things 
happening and good things coming and God has prepared us for them. So let me ask you a question. Have you ever felt like this? Where things are bad and weighing down on you, you're unhappy, you're sad, you're confused, right? Or have you ever seen anybody else like that? Maybe one of your siblings or your parents or somebody who's just unhappy and sad and tough? Guess what you can do? Take the good news that God gives you and help level somebody out, right? Say, you know what? I know things are rough. I know things look bad and you're sad and upset, but God is there for you. And I'm here for you to help. Same as people do for you, right? When you're having a bad day, sometimes somebody gives you a hug, somebody makes you feel better, and you say, okay, it's not that bad. Right? That's what it means when God says he's going to send John to prepare us to help make things level and straight because Jesus is coming and Jesus is the one who helps to keep us level in those lines, right? Not like this, not like this, not completely upside down. <laughs> But level. So let's remember, in this time of season, we're preparing to make ourselves level, to, to hear the good news of Jesus and to celebrate that. So let's have a prayer together. Dear God, we thank you that you send us good news that helps to balance all the struggles we have in our life. And not only just to balance them, but to make things joyful and to allow us to spread that joy to others so they too can feel calm and level and happy. We thank you for this wonderful gift that you give us in the name of your coming son, Jesus. Amen. Thanks for coming up. gospel comes to us from St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Imagine that you live in Judea near Jerusalem around 30 AD. Some really hairy guy is out in the wilderness, dressed very oddly. He is loud. He spends his days telling people over and over, that what they have heard in the temple for hundreds of years is now about to be real. Get ready for the Lord's coming. Repent and be baptized. Things must be straightened out and the time is now. So begins the Gospel of Mark. Notice that there's no Christmas story no Bethlehem, no wise men, no star. 
nothing cute or heartwarming. All the people in Mark's gospel need to know is that the Messiah is near. What Isaiah and the other prophets have foretold is about to happen. The baby Elizabeth and Zechariah longed for so long is now grown up, and it's John's job, that's his assignment, to get the word out. The Messiah is coming. Be ready so that you don't miss the promised one. Repent so you will understand how desperate the situation is. John harkens back to the prophet Isaiah who so beautifully envisioned a savior, who said the glory of the Lord would be revealed and all people would see it if they understood the truth of their lives, if they would look to God and not any other thing, not any other thing, not an idol society has created, not to yourself, be shaken up enough to be shaped up. Listen and be exceedingly glad that the penalty has been paid because we are sinners and we are stiff-necked and we do perpetuate evil. Be glad, exceedingly glad, that God will not remember our sin, but only remember his love for us. And they came. And they came. And they listened. And they confessed their sins. They came for that baptism in the river to be ready. Let me ask you a question. Does this phrase sound familiar to you from years ago? I didn't do it. It wasn't me, Dad. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, Mom. How about these answers that seem to pop up on the news all the time? Did you participate in this, sir? No, I never. Or the answer, it depends what you mean by and then fill in the blank. A person is asked, were you part of this crime? Answer, absolutely not. From politicians, to coaches, to sports figures, to Hollywood stars, to just about everyone, it's the same answer. No, it wasn't me. Get that spotlight off me, turn off the cameras. I don't have to answer that. Where's my lawyer? Dr. Phil often just about falls off his chair with frustration during many interviews when almost everyone in that audience and he can see without a doubt the person is lying. He watches the eyes shifting, the trying to get out from under, but that person continues to say, I don't think like that. I didn't say that. He says, roll the tape. But I didn't mean it in that way. She made me do it. He drove me to it. I'm not really like that. And we can, every one of us, see that most, that person most certainly is like that. Well, people of Roberts and surrounding communities, John the Baptist is crying out in the wilderness to say that we can try to fool our friends try to fool our spouses and children, try to fool Dr. Phil and a judge, but we can't fool God. It's to our absolute peril when we don't want to fess up while there is time. A friend called me a few weeks ago so upset because a, few, a former teacher at the school where she taught in middle school had been arrested for molesting a number of young boys over the years. She never did like him. She always thought there was something a little off about him. She didn't think he was a good teacher. He was always very full of himself, like he was the best teacher in the whole school, and he made snide remarks to other teachers. He was claiming he didn't do anything. He was a good man, 
He would just take these boys on summer trips, so more education for them. He, and he kept saying that even though 12 young men, now they're young men, came forward to say something horrible happened on those trips. She asked me, as her former pastor, what to do. She knew that the Lord commanded her to pray for everyone, even your enemies, and she said, I'm really trying to pray but it usually comes out, dear Lord, I really would like his like teeth to fall out or for him to break out in boils or something. <laughs> what could I pray that would be in line with what the Lord would want? I told her, please pray that he will repent, that he will admit what he did. Because as long as anyone continues to deny the truth, his life, our life, is in mortal danger with our God. Only when we repent can we be forgiven. It was me, Lord. Only when we realize the sin between God and us, how much we need a Savior, can we be glad there is a Savior and call to him to forgive us and to heal us. Only when we say with deep sorrow, it was me, can the Lord come to fix us and we can stand and begin again. This is part of what Advent is all about, hearing the cry to make our lives straight <laughs> Ask to come to Jesus because time is fleeing and he is coming. This is our golden opportunity these weeks to understand that we need to humble ourselves before the Lord and admit who we really are or we will miss him. We will be left to ourselves, good Lord, left to ourselves to figure out how to get through this world. We cannot build enough storehouses or gather up enough gold to rid ourselves of our guilt or our shame or our fear or add one more day to our lives. We cannot save ourselves at all. Only God can do that and God is waiting to do that when we admit that we've put our trust in too much stuff, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves, we have not wanted to do his will, we have gone our own way and not his way, I have done this. I have left this undone. It was me. Come, O oh Lord, and teach me. Put me on the right path so I may live. Be my shepherd. Then people of Judea and Samaria and Illinois and Mississippi, then God can rush in with blessings, with the words of his prophets and his son and forgive us. I tell you that you will receive double blessings because the truth is told. And we begin to trust God with everything. And we have humbled ourselves. We have asked for mercy. Comfort, comfort my people, says our God. And what seemed hopeless is transformed. Get ready for light to shine in the worst of darknesses, the worst fear, the ugliness of sins. We have served our terms, and God is remembering us with a son. I know, Jesus knows, that since childhood we have never liked having the hammer come down on us. <laughs> we have wanted to shift the blame to brothers, sisters, classmates, anyone. But know that it is love that calls us to account so we will not keep killing ourselves, ruining our lives, but have the chance to be forgiven and begin again. 
Emmanuel, God with us, is coming, says John the Baptist, the powerful one who baptizes us into the family of God and sends us the Holy Spirit to shake us up, teach us, revive us, lead us to the right and the only path. He will be here any minute. So let go of what is wrong, what is condemning us all, and invite him into our hurting hearts. We confess to him that we have sinned, and please remember that sin is sin is sin. The person who molests children is guilty of the same amount of sin as a person who shoplifts something from Dollar General is the same as gossiping, is the same as lying. We confess we have forgotten, we have ignored, we have covered up or tried to, and now we are heartbroken and afraid. Give us strength for this new day that is coming, Lord. Jesus wants to give us every gift, but we have to take the time, know that there's only a certain amount of time to stop clinging to bad stuff, foolish stuff, idols, anything in this world. We have to want to be with him, and now is the time while there is time. You may have heard the joke about the devil wanting to go on vacation and interviewing three demons for the job of interim devil. Well, first devil, what will you do to thwart Christians? One says, I'll tell them there is no God. Tried that, says the devil. The second demon says, he'll tell them that Jesus is just a historical figure, just a guy. Been there, done that. The winning candidate says, I'll tell them they have all the time in the world. Hired, says the devil. It was me, O oh Lord. And I hate that it was me. And I know something is very wrong. And I'm here to ask to change. We have heard the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. We want forgiveness now, O oh Lord. We want to see Jesus now, O oh Lord. Hence the warning. He's coming, and he's coming soon in his glory to be right beside us in this muck and mire. He wants us that much <laughs> to come right here to be with us. He's here with us today in bread and wine so that we don't have to be afraid of what was in the past or what we do now or afraid of those enemies, what the world can do. We don't have to be afraid of the past or the present or anything. Before God, just say it now and be healed. Beloved, shout like the baptizer and sing like the redeemed. Amen.
Now let us stand and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, but one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. Now, with longing and hopeful expectation, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. We pray for the church, that it be a herald of glad tidings, announcing the good news that you are drawing near. We pray for this community of faith, that in our busy and fast-paced lives, you will grant us the gift of patience and trust in your steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all the wonderful gifts that you bring into our lives. Especially this morning, we remember the gift of Tipton that you gave to Dustin and Kelsey. May he bring joy and peace to them. And we ask that, you, that we may see your blessings and share your joy to the world in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are weighed down with economic instability, sorrow, anxiety, sickness, or grief. We remember especially this morning Martin, Dixie, Lee, Julia, Marilyn, Marilyn, Chuck, Barb, Dorothy, Gary, Hannah, Irene, Sharon, Stan, Marcia, Iona, Jim, Ruth, Lori, Jim, Pat, Rosemary, Lois, Jim, Clayton, and all those who rest in our hearts and our minds, speak tenderly to them, comfort them in your compassionate embrace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all your holy ones, who faithfully prepare the way of the Lord. Open our, a our eyes to the new heavens and new earth made known in your advent among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers, faithful God, as we watch and we wait for your coming among us. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also let us share a sign of that peace with one another.
Let us pray. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes again to judge the world in righteousness. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, Resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, that by this Holy Communion we may know the unity we share with all your people. In the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come and eat.
Now let us rise to receive the blessing of the table. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Bless you now and forever. Amen.